Hey everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop, along with StarMobiles.com. Saturday night, a little after 11 p.m., that cricket finally shut up. And what we have in the background is some half-inch deep Icon metric impact sockets, right? They're on an 18-inch Ernst orange rail, and if you know anything about my setup in the orange U.S. General Master Tech, SAE is orange. Now, the reason they're there, I didn't have a green rail ready to go, and we've rectified that right here. So this is a little quick haul from Ernst, and our first item set us back $24.95. It is their 18-inch. This is the only way they currently make green and orange is 18-inch. So half-inch, you'd probably want 18-inch. Three-eighths, debatable, depends what your socket sizes are, what you plan to fit on them. Quarter drive, you can totally buy these, but you can only get them in an 18-inch iteration. So uh, maybe that'll change in the future. Right now, that's the way it is. The good news for me, that set from Icon, that's 10 all the way through 27, 10 through 19 solid, and then I believe 21, 4, 6, and 7, if I'm not mistaken. And what we just opened up is their shallow companion set, and that's where they're ultimately going to go is on this guy. So I've covered these pretty extensively in the past this is kind of what you get the green just super super pops i mean he absolutely it's one of those things i think the camera does a pretty good job uh it's a little darker than what i'm seeing through the lens right now um i'd say it's a little bit darker than my alpha gloves which by the way discount code lone star saves you 20 percent. i make nothing i just do that for your convenience i also have links to all this stuff again for your convenience now coming around you've seen it i'll recap it quickly the coolest thing about the urn stuff is just that it excels in multiple areas it's not necessarily something that you just leave in your box it's not necessarily something that's on the go it's not necessarily something that you carry from the box to the cart to the work site it does all of them and it does them very well so a transportable secure versatile uh, again push and slide there's just a ton of stuff to love here if we were to press down here, that lets us release the socket rail. That means if I don't want to take my deeps, if I just need the shallows, I can run over with just this rail. If you've got a single row, you can just leave it somewhere. If you want the tray, it's available in a double or a triple bank. It's just a really, really nice product. And you're going to get to see this thing populated at the end because each tray comes with the size label markings. And we're just going to go ahead and lay them out for this Icon set. Now, coming in our next item, we're going to go ahead and go with, this is a green again. We brought this in in orange when it was brand new. And uh, for whatever reason, I wind up using the three row trays a little bit more frequently. I love the tin compartment. I have a couple of them that are like super tricked out. Like everything fits perfect. It's almost like it was designed for it. Um, but sometimes that's not the case. I sit there and I've got like a couple that are perfect and then I'm like, man, what do I do with this one now? <laughs> so, uh, I usually find workarounds for it, but this just works super well for things. Um, usually I've been doing a lot like electrical stuff. I'm also organizing that stuff. So heat shrink, cable ties, that type of stuff. That's kind of what I'm planning with this. I think I know what I'm going to do. I think it's going to look really good next to the blue one. Uh, it should look good next to the orange one if I wind up moving that. My orange one, what I wound up doing with it is I've got nut grips from Koken, and then I've got extensions, and it works super good for that. Uh, also, uh, I think I had an inspection mirror, but I mean, you kind of get the idea. You can also use this as a job tray. You can just throw random stuff in it, um, but it just looks so good. This green, I'm telling you... <laughs> If, if you're a green person, this is pretty spot on. I don't think anyone's going to be upset with it. If you're not, the cool thing is green complements pretty much whatever you would be using. And if you're not into the colors, I can assume that you're using black, red, and blue. And that would be basically to divide your metric and your SAE. Green complements blue, green complements red, and green complements black. It also, as you can see in my case, what I'm doing at the Master Tech, it looks really good with orange. If you've got like the crazier colors, you know, or maybe you do as much as you can in yellow or purple, the green is complementary there too. So it's one of those deals. Uh, if, whether you color code stuff or not, it's something that I think is going to tie in well. The orange, I could see people like, yeah, it's not for me. 
this just really does work well so if you wanted to have heat shrink you know like your small sizes versus your big sizes you can kind of like quarter five sixteenths three eighths or you can do it based on shrink rate or whatever and you can have this for your small and your blue or black or red for your big there's just all kinds of options and it's another way to color coordinate so uh, 9.95 you just cannot go wrong with these things dimensions again 10 and a half by 10 and a half three compartment and if you did not know even though i say it all the time absolutely everything earned sales is made in the usa it's not not sent there and they package it it's not made somewhere and they assemble the pegs to the rail so they get to say assembled in the usa it's actually made you can go to oregon and that's where they crank this stuff out so very cool on that front and right here this is one that again when i opened the box i was like stupid excited about it just it looks better in person so i'd seen them online i knew they existed but what am i talking about i'm talking about this the plier pro so you've seen me again multiple multiple times cover this uh, if you had to pick any negative or any downside here it's not adjustable sometimes particularly with your truly fat handled comfort grips i.e nws having the ability to sort of tweak this just a little is nice for 90 95 percent of pliers this is going to be way more than adequate you might even want to scoot them in which again that's where adjustable would come in as an an upgrade if you will but for the vast majority of people this is going to be pretty solid and again using the colors you can organize you can do if you're an all green person obviously i don't have to explain it to you but let's say that you got a lot of pliers you like to try things out you're like me okay so you've got your cheap harbor freight stuff you got some crud when you ran into home depot you got your knipex you've got your Ghidorah. you ordered in the snap-on you know fancy side cutters you got your icon flush cutters that everyone on the internet tells you to buy whatever it might be picture it this way so you come in and you've got like your combination pliers in green You've got your red one and you do your side cutters. You've got your orange one and you do like your crimpers or locking pliers. It's just a way, that way you open your drawer and if you're gonna debate whether you're gonna use Stavila or Ghidorah or Knipex, you know that all your side cutters are in green and that narrows it down. You go from 30 pliers to 10 pliers, basically. Uh, similarly, if it's a deal where everything that you're buying from Snap-on has the green handles, Here's an organizer for you. Uh, also, if you did not know, if some of you buy organizers from Snap-on, and you think, man, that looks a lot like the one that I got from my Snap-on guy. Well, you probably didn't pay $16.99 for it. <laughs> and, uh, if you were to order this in and compare it, you might be surprised because they are, in fact, made by Ernst for Snap-on. So if you're looking for like the Snap-on premium stuff, but you know, without the S logo or something, you can save yourself a lot of money and invest that in either A, more organizers, or B, more tools. So it's sort of a win-win there. But uh, this is their part number 5501. Once again, it will be linked. I've covered it extensively as well. And essentially you can see a drawer lined out with these. Uh, what do I have in mind? Why did I bring this in? Well, over in the Husky, we've got a drawer that is getting shock full of pliers, and it is almost entirely Knipex. Um, there's a couple of Ghidorah, there's a couple of uh, Stavilas, there's some Viha, there's Channel Lock over in the corner. Uh, the NWS got chased out long ago, like we just we ran out of space. We've got a ton of pliers. <laughs> if, you, if you go back and look at, you know, 80 plus KC tool halls, man, we've we've acquired some cool stuff. So what I actually have in mind, I have just three to five pairs of Stavila pliers and I'm thinking to myself like man you know I think they would fit here and that would be really cool because I'd have green for Stavila and green Ernst since it's now available and that's what we're going to do so you're going to get to see this populated as well I can't show it to you in the drawer because uh, I've currently got wire racks I guess I could theoretically go throw this in a drawer for you but I think seeing it on the bench top will be sufficient so uh what i'm gonna do it's getting crazy late it's 11 30. i kind of need to be up early tomorrow but i'm gonna get this stuff unpacked and i'm gonna populate it a little bit and i'll kind of show you what it would look like so the time consuming one is going to be the pegs on the socket boss but it's super satisfying i'm just going to clean my hands up a little bit more and go to town on that 
All right, so unboxing this stuff and what's important to showcase to you again if you were unaware, if you haven't seen my other videos, the way the socket boss is going to work, you press down here, you can see this little locking tab, what I'm hitting with my thumb. That allows me then, with this thumb, these are very long, it's hard to get it in the frame, but you press down and you push forward and that allows you to simply extract the entire rail, carry it with you standalone. And if I come in and do that one more time, you can then uh, have access to this. It's included with every single socket boss. Whatever you're doing, hex bits, SAE, metric, torques, you should have pretty much what you need to do with these rails. And that's what I'm going to do is come in and we're going to specifically populate this for that Harbor Freight's icon set 10 through 27 with a couple of skips there towards the end. So I'm going to get that laid out and then we will take a look at the finished product. There's a little update for you. So 10 through 19, 21, 22, 26, 27. And if you notice, we have three pegs left over. It's a 14-piece set. These come with 17 pegs. Again, depending what you put on them, you can often fit more sockets. It sort of depends how big they are, what size ranges. Uh, some people you might have, you know, like your 10 through 19 spaced here. And then the back on your second rail, you might do like large sockets up through 36 or something. Sky is the limit, all personal preference. And that's the cool thing about these modular pegs. So if you note the back rail, we don't have any numbers on them just yet. And in the front, we've got it structured for these icon sets. I also should mention that you get two rows of labels. That way, again, if you're doing something like I'm doing, where you're going 10 through 19, you don't just run out of labels and have to purchase some more or something. You've got it on the other sheet. So uh, with that said, I'm going to get back to it and uh, we will wrap this thing up. I was at 426, 426 Hemi when we stopped. I timed myself. I had an issue where the T15 came up with me there at the end. And then I also killed a mosquito and I responded to a text. So within four minutes, you can basically populate one of these with the stickers. I take my time. I like to do as best I can to kind of pack these down. You want clean hands. You don't want any grease or oil. That's going to result in the best adhesion. And there you see, they're all structured right there. Now, you might fit the 10s, 11s, and 12s right where they are. These are super easy to adjust because we're going to get to a point where the 18 and the 19 probably need more space than they have. So if you're curious how this works, I'll do it one-handed. It's that easy. The other hand obviously holding the camera. You simply just slide them up and down the rail. So when you extract these, like these three pegs, I'm just going to go ahead and take them off. I'll put them in my bolt pile. I like to come in with a little flat blade. You can also use pliers. You can also just snap them off with your hands if you want to. But if you just get a lip right up under there as far back as you can, you can pop it off with minimal impact to the uh, clip and you'll have them ready to go on a rainy day. Similarly, let's say that you wanted to buy this icon set that we're using 10 through 27 but you're like i gotta have a 24. well go ahead populate your peg you know have your socket ready to go again i don't know why they don't sell standalone but it's another story for another day uh, but you can structure it however you need to if you use 19 all the time and you want a 12 point you have a specific use for a 12 point impact socket that's 19 millimeters you can stick another uh, label you might again if you don't have a ton of earned stuff like when you do your SAE rails you'll have the metric that you didn't use but if for some reason you don't if you're only doing metric stuff and you're like man I need more labels they're available they're stupid cheap and so let's say that you're 13 and 19 you want 6 point and 12 point for certain applications you can do that fill your rail up it's really whatever you want to do what we've done now I'm gonna pull those three off on both rails and then we're going to start populating these. Uh, clean your impact sockets. And what I mean by that is like if they're brand new like ours would be in the case of the shallows. Get the oil off of the bottom, particularly the bottom. You don't want to like taking the stickers off or messing with the adhesion. If you can leave this for a little while, that would be best. But uh, we're making videos and it's almost midnight. So I'm going to cheese it and just go to town. But take your time on this. Just place them however you want. Centered, offset, what have you. But just take your time and kind of run over on both sides, if you will. Do everything you can to promote good adhesion when you first do this. All right, check it out. We've got it populated with our brand new shallows from Icon. Again, 27, 26, 22, 21, and then 19 down through 10. 
and we've got this one ready to go for the deeps that we've had sitting on this orange rail over there <laughs> and uh, this just kind of shows it to you unpopulated but numbered and populated to the back uh, note it does fill it out pretty good I kind of like if possible having this visible just for ease of access but personally for me when I lay these out I like the lock to be on the left so this keyhole I always want my small number by some of you like to go you know opposite of me you know where you have like 27 down through 10 I like 10 through 27 I read left to right I read numbers 1 through 10 uh, you do you it's all about personal preference but for me and even if you're the opposite of me if you want 27 uh, to be on the left side down through 10 uh, use this keyhole to kind of indicate your start point or you can just flip the socket boss around again it kind of comes down to personal preference but sweet little setup right there I'm gonna go ahead I did this for my random video I've had all these little clips I've never known what to do with and one of them stopped here but the socket boss is so easy to use if you hear that click, I can just one hand that with my non-dominant left hand. And this is only so you can see the orange and the green side by side. Why would you do that? In this case with me, orange SAE green metric. Maybe you want all your shallows on a rail and you just want to throw them down. Uh, maybe you want 6 point and 12 point shallow and that's how you're going to distinguish them. Maybe you just like it. But uh, whatever you want to do, you can make it happen. And that's exactly what we're going to do, getting these off of our orange rail onto our green numbered rail. And there she is, wrapped up shallow, deep in the back. All green, all new. We've got our uh, little temporary guy over there from the three roll setup. And all we have to do now is place this down in the box. That's all. Good bit of weight, but I got my uh, that paint pin is going to be the death of me. Got it almost in <laughs> right there. Fits like a glove. That is exactly what I wanted to see. So this is sort of the setup now. Again, we've got orange for SAE, green for metric, and we've got that over there right now. Might we put it, flip it around? Absolutely, but for this point in time, this is how we've got her structured. We can easily see our size labels down this line. If I zoom in, you should be able to see what I'm referencing there. So you got your 15, 16, 17, 19, 21. You get the idea. Super sweet setup there, and uh, it's awesome. I love having these new colors, particularly for this impact-based top section of the cart. Worked out really, really well. Looks super cool. And now we're going to run back, and I'm going to showcase what I'm doing with the Green Plier Pro. Let's play Can I Zoom In on where the style villas are going to be. I'm going to go with right here, sort of where that scratch is. Okay, by scratch, it's that thing. Okay, let's see if I got it. I was one off. I was literally one off. So that's little VR dolphin nose things right there. It's some of the style villas. We're going to grab them for the plier proof. All right, so we got our socket boss fully populated, fully labeled. Doesn't take much time at all. And you know how I told you, you could do all sorts of crazy things with these three compartment and ten compartment organizers. This gives you an example just of pliers if you wanted to lay them out in this manner, particularly if you do like micro stuff. You can fit a lot of pliers in there. But what we want to highlight isn't necessarily the drawer, it's going to be the plier pro. So we're going to grab this guy, which almost fit, just quite didn't make it. And I'm going to showcase what we can do here. Now there's two schools of thought. Okay, If we look at the Ernst artwork here, they're the type that have the handle in the back in this facing out. Now this all totally comes down to your drawer layout. I should highlight this new design will fit a three inch drawer, three inch drawer, I should say. You can do this where the business end is racked and your handle is out so it's easier to grab. Or you can set it up where you've got your handle okay, set back in the plier pro to keep it upright and sorted and then you can easily identify, oh there's my long pliers wrench, I need the medium size. It's a catch-22 type deal. I've had really good luck doing it uh, both ways actually. But just to kind of give you an idea, this is Stavilla's dipped handle. We're going to throw that down. We want this guy over here. So we've got a wide assortment of sizes. That's about a 10 inch and that's about a 5 inch. Uh, my probably most used from Stavilla would be the needle nose. 
And then if we wanted the side cutters down here, boom. So in terms of Stavilla, you are covered 100%. I can't imagine them having a fatter handle that I don't know about. It's certainly possible, but I think everything they have would fit quite nicely here. So again, where did I throw that packing? Up here. Okay, well, that's one way to do it. And in my opinion, it sort of depends. Like if this is the back of the drawer, you're gonna open it this way. This lets me know like, oh, there's my needle nose, there's my side cutters. Some people though, don't mind sort of like looking back and it sort of does kick the handles up, which sometimes you could consider that like, oh, it's easier to grab. I don't have to like come slide under the business end or something. It's really all just personal preference. I don't know how else, how better to instruct you you know it's whatever i do here you could be the exact opposite of you can agree with me you could be somewhere in the middle you might like these long pliers to come business end out short pliers like that it might be the opposite i will tell you when it's done like this you know like when they kick up like that you either have them out here where you're not really taking advantage of the separation or back there it does get hard to see particularly in a drawer uh, so i tend myself kind of like this and the plier handles then you take advantage of that height right otherwise like you wouldn't need that tall of a deal and the handles are sorted upright it keeps them you know nice and separated organized you don't have them flat lay you don't have anything taking up tons of space this is about as efficient as you can store pliers is vertically if i turn this sideways See how it takes up basically two of these slots, particularly with the ergonomics of the handle. You're going to typically have plier handles that aren't straight outside of pincers. They're going to have some arc to them. So I can take up this much drawer space or I can take up that much drawer space. You can fit more tools. It's basically the selling point. But uh, yeah, I think this is how I'll use this. I don't think I can move the style villas yet. We've never done a toolbox tour of the Husky with like fully loaded with all kinds of crud. <laughs> Maybe we should do that first. But this is what I have in mind. And this also means that we've got two, three, four, five, five reasons, five excuses, five. We'll go with reasons. It sounds better to buy more style villa pliers. Uh, we need to fill out the green plier pro from Ernst. So. Thank you, Ernst, for making it in America and giving me more reason to purchase pliers. Uh, true story, not to derail this too much, but VBW Stavilla, I know they're expensive, but their pliers are fantastic. Uh, they come in, they're super broken in. I've not had any issues with any of them. This one does kind of flash rust. It's weird, none of the others did. Uh, and something else that I'll highlight, since I have more Stavilla stuff here, you don't have to do pliers, okay? Like these picks, you can totally store them. Again, this way, if you throw this one in like that, okay, it's going to hold it, it's going to keep it organized for you, but you might not see that that's like your S-hook or something, right? If you have it out here, you do run the risk of jabbing yourself, but you're going to be like, oh, that's my, that's my kick out, or this is the one I need to deep in, or this is what I need to pull that fuel line off. And see how this keeps them from rolling in your drawer or just kind of stacking up on top of each other. Speaking of that, if we wanted to go vertical, you can totally do that. Maybe you use 90 degree picks all the time. You can just put them together. Uh, how We can probably go three high here. <laughs> yeah, you could totally do it. I think two is the comfort point though. You got really good sidewall on there. You can put chisels, uh, that's very popular. I do some weird stuff with like punches, precision drivers work really well there uh, to kind of give you an idea. Got a PB Swiss here that ought to look good. You could sort them like that. It's not ideal for screwdrivers really because you don't, it's sort of hard to see the markings and everything. But in the case of some, like the PB Swiss have small handles, you could fit a few, particularly precision drivers, if that's something you wanted to do. But with these style villas, it just looks so good. Uh, also, if you're a tool truck guy, if you've got the snap-ons, or maybe, you know, you've got, I don't know, custom handles from someone, or you dip your own, and you're like, man, I hate putting that in red. Why does everyone use red? Here's an option for you. So, uh, like I said, we brought in the orange right as soon as that stuff came out, and now we sort of had reason to bring in the green. So, if you've got suggestions on the five style villa pliers we should grab, let me know. But, uh, otherwise, we'll we'll kind of bring them in over time when they're on sale or tool of the day or something. But it is it's like 
almost 1 a.m. now. I better get in, shower. Uh, like I said, got to get up early tomorrow. But that's it. We brought in for $9.95 this 10, 10 .5 by 10.5 three-drawer organizer. Super nice. Very reasonable at basically $10. $16.99 got us this 10 slot plier pro pro tip here if you take this end or that end you can actually nest that like if this glove is the side rail or the you know drawer you can put this here let's say you had 10 uh, Stavilla pliers whatever they might be you can put your long one or your awkward ones here between this one and the drawer and you basically create an 11 slot I know thinking crazy there so uh keep that in mind these look really good strung together you can color coordinate but 16.99 again and then 24.95 24.99 25 bucks we'll call it we got the 18 inch it's the only way you can get green and orange right now um socket boss half inch pegs we had three extra on both rails not that we could have used all three but we have them for future projects and that might be a spoiler on something but we have them totally tricked out with our icon set of impacts from harbor freight and uh, that's that so this is a little quicker than usual we don't i don't feel like we have to go into the details every time if you want details if you crave dimensions and further analysis i've covered these i'll try to remember to link the videos but uh, just search my channel for earned stuff you'll see pliers drawer organizers socket bosses and uh, spoiler alert we are not done with the socket boss i've got some plans we're going to do some cool stuff uh, it's things that are currently not in production and we're going to try to produce them ourselves so it could be awesome if it turns out like it is in my mind it'll be super cool uh, it could also be a total waste of time money and effort so it's just an unknown at this point but as soon as i get some free time stay tuned it's going to be cool even if it's a fail it'll be cool but it just won't be functional so uh, with that said, I gotta get inside. It's hot. The cricket is shut up finally. Maybe that spider got it. But uh, I'm gonna run inside. We got uh, a couple of videos done here tonight, and I've got a busy day tomorrow. So thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great Labor Day weekend. Hopefully, you're off Monday. You get to, if you're like me, you'll be working on your own stuff Monday. So even though it's a holiday, you're still working, but it's happy work. <laughs> I guess that's how you describe it. And uh, with that said, let me know your thoughts, what you think of the green stuff from Ernst. If you want to see them further develop it, uh, what other colors you might like to see. If you're like, man, that's cool they did those. What about purple or yellow? Feel free to leave comments. Uh, you never know what someone might do, you know, if they get enough of uh, you know, momentum behind it. So uh, more importantly, your thoughts, opinions, firsthand experience, leave that down below as well. But with that said, like I told you, I've got some cool stuff planned. We just need time. Stay tuned. Have a fantastic weekend. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All three at Lone Star Mopars. With that said, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you back here for more action from the shop.